Today we are going to talk about a topic that is near and dear to my heart um, because I see way too many women and men suffering with this condition. Um, and specifically, we are going to be talking about something called stress urinary incontinence, or which is a type of bladder leakage. So let me start out with the simple fact that one in three women will experience bladder leakage at some point in their lifetime. And it, although it is common, one in three, 33% of us will experience it, it is not normal. Let me reiterate that. Bladder leakage is not normal. It is a sign of dysfunction in our system. And so we are gonna specifically talk about one type of bladder leakage today called stress urinary incontinence because stress urinary incontinence um, is probably one of the most common things that I see here at my practice and it's one that responds really well to conservative treatment options and changes that you can make um, to make a difference. So uh, stress urinary incontinence is a episode of leakage that happens when our um, the pressure from our bladder um, is more so than the pressure that the pelvic floor muscles can resist back against. So typically happens in situations like exercise, so running, jumping, sprinting, um, sometimes it can be a squat or a lunge, anything where we're kind of loading um, the body a little bit more. Um, also commonly happens in situations of a cough, a laugh, a sneeze. Um, so, so these are all high pressure situations, again, that are putting more pressure down through the pelvic area. Um, some people experience it uh, when they're getting up and down out of a chair. Um, that can be a, a sign of it. Some people experience it just when they're, they're walking. And that, that's enough to get them to leak. But Typically, we see it a lot more in um, higher level activities or more forceful or pressure filled situations like running, jumping, coughing, sneezing, laughing. Okay, so in these situations, what's happening is that the pressure down through the bladder and the pelvic area is more than what the pelvic floor muscles can resist back up against. And so the pelvic floor muscles, in order for us not to leak, have to kind of close off the holes and support that area. And if they're not strong enough or they're not coordinating together well with other muscles in the area, um, then we're going to have a problem as far as them not being able to do their job in that high load situation. Um, so with the, the types of leakage, you know, the situations that it happens in, oftentimes, um, it can be leakage that's just a few drops, or it can be a complete waterfall. And so I want people to get used to the idea that um, any amount of leakage, whether it be a few drops or a teaspoonful to I've got to go change my pants, is falls into that bladder leakage or urinary incontinence realm. And so don't think, well, oh, I did, it's just a few drops. It's not a problem for me. That is a sign of dysfunction in your core support system. So what can you do if you are one of the one in three who are experiencing this? So contrary to what Poise, the company, wants you to do, you do not need to just rush out and buy um, the latest and greatest pad that you know looks less and less like a diaper. That, that, that is not the goal. We're not all marching down the path to needing diapers. Um, there are things that you can do uh, to help improve uh, the performance of your pelvic floor muscles. So first and foremost is finding where they are. So um, if you're sitting down, what you want to try and do is thinking about doing a squeeze around the vagina and anus. It almost should feel like you're trying to lift the vagina up off the chair a little bit, but um, it should also relax back down too at the end. If you are really having trouble feeling the contraction of the pelvic floor happen, um, you can test it out uh, uh, on the toilet. So you can get a stream of urine going and try to stop that flow of urine and see 
if you can stop the flow of urine. Now I only recommend doing this as a test and not frequently in a row because it can mess up with our normal urinary habits. So, but every once in a while doing it to test the strength of your pelvic floor muscles is okay. And you should be able to stop the flow of urine. If you can't, then that's a sign that you maybe have some muscle weakness or dysfunction there and that may be contributing to your leakage. Um, sometimes, when, especially if we've been chronically sick, this flu season has been awful for people. And so maybe they're doing a lot of coughing, a lot of throwing up. Um, this is a lot of extra force down through our pelvic area. And it actually can kind of weaken things over time. So people who previously weren't having any bladder leakage issues might now be experiencing um, bladder leakage with coughing or throwing up, sneezing, um, because their, their bladder or their pelvic floor muscles have kind of taken a toll in this cold season. And it's almost like it's knocked them down a couple of notches and they have to kind of build back up before they can uh, create that support again. Uh, think of it almost as the being those muscles and being injured um, and that they have to build up again to be able to do their job the way that it's supposed to be done. So what can you do now if you are experiencing bladder leakage? First and foremost is see if you can find and use your pelvic floor muscles. Um, if you're having trouble even identifying them or getting that squeeze to happen, then um, that is really a good time to partner up with the pelvic physical therapist to evaluate what is going on so that you can be performing those exercises correctly and getting the most benefit out of them. Because it's not all about just squeezing the pelvic floor. We've got to make sure that those pelvic floor muscles contract, relax, and work together with other muscles in the area like our abdominals and our diaphragm. So part of it can be making sure that we are engaging those muscles at the right time. So one of the tricks and tips that I tell people to do if they're having leakage with a cough or sneeze is what's called the knack. And um, it's just a little pre-contraction of the pelvic floor. You're kind of getting it braced and ready to accept the load of um, that's going to come from the pressure with the cough and the sneeze. And if you you kind of stop and contract those pelvic floor muscles first, they're a little bit more on and ready to take on that extra pressure and you may not have the leakage that occurs there. So if you have warning that a cough, a laugh, or a sneeze is coming, then try doing a little um, pre-contraction or a neck squeeze of the pelvic floor um, ahead of time to see if that helps you eliminate uh, the leakage that you're having with it.